Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome everyone to the closing ceremony of the IFO 2022. What an incredible week we had. You students had to take the challenge of solving extremely demanding experimental and theoretical problems. Behind the scene, so much work had to be done since last Sunday mostly involving the academic committee and the team leaders for the discussion and translation of the questions, but also an incredible team of markers to correct and moderate those exams. And in a few minutes, we will reach the ultimate goal of the competition with the unveiling of the medal winners. Reaching this goal has been a journey with up and downs, but eventually, Every challenge could be overcome thanks to the collaboration of so many involved people. I'd like to use this occasion to address my thanks to some of them. First of all, I'd like to thank Rajdeep Pravat Singh and Paul Stanley, respectively President and Secretary of the IFO. We appreciated their continuous support uh, during the last two and a half months. And without their counsel, it's not sure we could have organized uh, this IFO. I'd like also to thank Jan Kalda, the chairman of the academic committee, and his incredible team of authors. Despite the short notice, they managed to provide extremely good problems, and they kept the high standard of the IFO. Furthermore, I'd like to thank the team of markers, more than 90 people, some of them managing to come to Zurich, but most of them having to work online all over the world. I'd like to thank them for their commitment and their patience. It was not e always easy to coordinate so many people, but in the end, we managed it. On the local side, there are also many, many people that we need to thank. First of all, I'd like to thank my colleague, Nicola Gantenbein, president of the Swiss Physics Olympiad, for his continuous help during the last few weeks. It was really crucial to uh, help this IFO happen. We also had during the week several helpers without whom we couldn't simply help the competition. So I'd like to, help, to, to thank A.K. Opferman, Dominic Schmidt, Patrick Vili, Rafael Zumbrun, Cela Frelescu, Jonas Meyer, Camilla Ivanova, Dominic Ecker, Ivan Istomin. Thank you very much for your help during the week. We also need to thank the whole team of all the exams, in particular Thomas Ullinger, Sebastian Stengele, and Michele Dorfi. As you know, we use now a uh, that tool called all the exams for discussing and translating the problems and also helping with the moderation. This year, it has been very crucial to have that tool at our disposal and thanks to the help, it worked pretty well. As many of you, especially students could see, we also had a presence on the social media and online. So I'd like to, th to thank Asira and Akshay for their support with the media, the website, and the newsletter as well. So thank you very much for you for spreading the news uh, or during the week. I'd also like to thank you leaders. Thanks to your hard work, your patience and your understanding, we managed to go through the week and we managed for the students to have problems to solve and in a few minutes to get medals. Thank you very much for your commitment. Now I'd like to address a few words to you, students. I know this has been a very difficult week. You mostly had to solve exams, maybe in a room, just with the five of you. And you had no possibility to meet any other people. Physically, I mean, of course, you had some occasions to talk to your peers online, 
but it's of course not the same as meeting people in real life. So I know, I hope this is the last time uh, the Olympiad had to happen online. We'll see, no one can predict the future, but hopefully next year, there'll be the possibility to meet people again. You'll get the results in a few minutes, and some of you may be happy with the results, some of you may be disappointed. Please don't be. The exams we had this year were particularly difficult. So it's no wonder that some of you didn't manage to solve them entirely or some parts of them. Moreover, taking an exam is just a moment in your life, just a snapshot uh, in a day. So it could be that not everything was perfect that day for you to, to perform. But it's not the problem. Even if it's not the case, just see that as an opportunity or a strength. I'd like to quote Richard Feynman. He once said, I don't know anything, but I do know that everything is interesting if you go into it deeply enough. So as I said, just see it as an occasion. If you don't know anything or something, just use it as an occasion to go more deeply into the subjects and to know more in your life. I hope this IFO has helped you to start your quest for knowledge in your life. Of course, you are just at the beginning of it. On the scale of your lifetime, you still have so much to do. So never stop ask, asking questions and never stop trying to understand the world around you. It may seem far away, but one day you will be in charge of our world, so be prepared. In the meantime, I wish you an excellent ceremony, congratulations to the winners, and above all, congratulations to every one of you for participating in the IFO 2022.
Hello everyone. It has been a straining week for every one of us, but I hope you enjoyed it. Some of you might be able to attend the IPEG show next year in Tokyo, but for others it was the last big Olympiad. If you continue studying physics, this were not the last puzzling physics problems. The real challenges wait for you when you start doing physics research. Olympic problems are formulated for you and are guaranteed to have a nice solution. In the future, you will be needing to formulate the problems by yourself. And these problems don't have nice solutions. You need to simplify them to make them solvable. But if you simplify too much, then you will be having the solutions which have nothing to do with real life. So be careful. I'll show you now how you can uh, get uh, physics models and physics problems from real life things. So here is a chain and then I can fold it. And then fold again. And I have something like this. And then I take another chain and now I don't fold, I start winding it. And then what, what I get, let us see. I get something like that. Now, uh, what I got, you can look into physics problem number one from this here theory test. I have good news for you. You will be able to start your physicist career in a, an exciting year, era. This is for two reasons, summed up in two words, simulations and data. First, about simulations. 30 years ago, a solvable problem was a problem which could be solved analytically with formulas. In modern era, computers have extended the range of solvable problems by orders of magnitudes. Anything which is solvable numerically is solvable. Please take a notice. A good modern physicist is also good at coding. Second, about data. The progress of physics relies on data. New data trigger the mind of a physicist. Distinguishing between correct and incorrect theories relies also on data. You are living in an era when huge masses of new data are coming in. When the international board discussed theory problems, the first images from James Webb's space telescope were published. We celebrated this with the theory problem number two. This telescope will feed physicists with qualitatively new data for many years to come. And this is only one example about modern technologies bringing us hitherto unseen data. Now is the best time to start a career of a physicist. The 21st century is a century of data science, and a good physicist needs to know how to deal with data. Next, a few words about the examination you had. Academic committee members did their best to prepare for you an interesting and motivating program set. But it is up to you to judge how well you succeeded. If you have a strong feeling about it, don't hesitate to send us a feedback via email or social media. It would be great to hear from you what did you like and what you didn't. Also, how did you feel about virtual experiments? How do these compare in your opinion with real experiments? Finally, acknowledgements. Let us make a big applause to organizers from Switzerland and to Lionel Philippos, the head of organizing committee, and to President Rajdeep Ravat Singh, and to our sponsors Huawei and Swiss Physics Olympiads, and to the 100 markers, majority of whom are former IPHU medalists, now at different stages of physics studies, from undergraduates to researchers. Then there are the academic committee members with hundreds of working hours. Paul Stanley, who made the experimental problem 2 and theory problem 2. David Kalda, who made the experimental problem 1. Han Binklin, Renning Lee, Leb Melikovsky, Barbara Rosner, who made many improvements to the problems and wrote solutions. Last but not least, all of you, students and mentors who worked during many years preparing for this competition. Thank you, everyone.
There are parts of our world where light can't reach. Divides that are too wide for rivers to flow. But technology has the power to help. In remote areas of Nigeria, connectivity brings new life to local communities, opening doors to trade, banking, better education and healthcare. In Bangladesh, digital training has given more than 240,000 women new opportunities in life. With AI, Deaf children everywhere can translate written words into sign language. So no child misses out on the joy of storytelling. In Central America, upcycled smartphones help rangers detect poachers and loggers, keeping rainforests safe for everyone. Our planet may not be perfect, but digital technology can help make it better. In the next five years, we want to work together with our partners to help 500 million more people directly benefit from digital technology. Focusing on healthcare, education, environmental protection and economic equality. Tech for all. Pass it on. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Ie Yasuhiro, a member of the organizing committee of International Physics Olympiad 2023 in Japan. On behalf of the organizing committee, I am pleased to make a proposal to host the 53rd Physics Olympiad I4 2023 in Tokyo. After three consecutive years of irregularity, we sincerely hope to hold the iPhone next year as an on-site face-to-face event. The iPhone 2023 Organizing Committee is chaired by Professor Kobayashi Makoto, theoretical particle physicist and Nobel laureate in 2008. Two co-chairs are Professor Amano Hiroshi, Nobel laureate in 2008, 14 for his research in blue LED, and Professor Kajita Takaaki, Nobel laureate in 2015 for his neutrino research at the Super Kamiokande facility. We plan to hold the IFO 2023 from Monday, July 10th to Monday, 17th next year. The venue of the event is the National Olympics Memorial Youth Center, located in Shibuya district of metropolitan Tokyo. The campus is presently surrounded by greenery of Yoyogi Park and historic Meiji Shrine. In the following, three short videos will be presented. The first one is an invitation message by Mr. Hashizume Atsushi, Director of the Human Resource Policy Division of the Ministry of the Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, or MEXT, Japan. The second video is an overview of the venue of the IFO 2023, the National Olympics Memorial Youth Center. The third one is a promotion video produced by the Tokyo Convention of Visitors Bureau entitled Tokyo Footage, showing the traffic, culture, food, and nature of Tokyo City. So please watch. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Hashizume Atsushi, the Director, Human Resources Policy Division the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, MEXT Japan. On behalf of the MEXT, 
I'm most privileged and pleased to announce our invitation of the 53rd International Physics Olympiad I4 2023 to Japan. The organizing committee of I4 2023 has been and is working hard to get ready for the I4 2023, which is planned to be held in July next year in Tokyo. Japanese physics community has contributed to the development of both fundamental and applied physics research, as highlighted by the physics Nobel Prizes awarded to Professor Kobayashi Makoto in 2008, Professor Amano Hiroshi in 2014, and Professor Kajita Takaki in 2015. These three eminent professors kindly agreed to carry the burden of chairing the I4 2023 organizing committee. I sincerely hope that the I4 2023 in Tokyo will be a memorable opportunity for young, talented students from all over the world to engage themselves in the contest and also to experience Japanese culture and make friendship with each other. Thank you. The National Olympics Memorial Youth Center is an educational and training complex consisting of five separate areas. The central building is used for lectures, seminars, and many other types of gatherings. The cultural building has studios and special rooms for various cultural activities. It also has large and small halls for ceremonies and performing arts. The athletic area offers a variety of facilities for athletic sports and exercise. The International Exchange Building offers conference rooms, reception spaces, meeting rooms, and other utility facilities. The accommodation area consists of four lodges, each of which offers different types of guest rooms. All the students will stay in these lodges. The Physics Olympiad examination will take place within this Olympic Memorial Center. Leaders, observers, and other participants will be accommodated in a separate hotel outside this premise, but located nearby. This concludes a brief introduction of the venue of I-4-2023.
student participants of IFO 2022, team leaders, observers, invigilators, ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. We just started about two months ago preparing for IFO 2022. Met for the final showdown about a week ago from 10th of July. And here we are at the closing ceremony at the end of an eventful, stressful yet exciting and a rewarding week of academic and other activities. So much has happened. So much was done during the last two months or so that this event will go not only in our memories, but also in the history of IFO as one of the most difficult IFO to be organized <clears throat> for the reason that is known to all of us. However, the successful conclusion of IFO 2022 is something that confirms where there is a will, there is a way. And it also tested our hypothesis and ability to demonstrate that a low cost, yet highly efficient and academically high quality Olympiad still very much possible within the limited time frame and with limited resources. Though it comes at the cost of sleepless nights, relentless efforts and exemplary leadership and support of many in the team. And these people need to be thanked. But for the limited short speech, I may miss many. So my apologies in advance. First and foremost, once again, I would like to thank organizing committee chair, Lionel Philippos, who together with Nicola Gantenbin and others from the Swiss Physics Olympiad Association, not only took the challenge, but completed it with the great success. Next, I would like to thank Academic Committee Chair Jan Kalda and his team, which include Paul Stanley, Tavit Kalda, Hanbin Ling, Jenning Lee, Lev Melnikowski, and few others who prepared excellent experimental and theory exams. I would like to express my sincere thanks to the hard work, coordination, and collaboration of over 90 markers who worked extremely hard <clears throat> as the problems were released to them only after the start of the respective exam. Sincere thanks to Thomas and the entire OLI exam team for excellent support through OLI exam tools for exam discussions, translations, moderation, and voting for the IB meetings. I would also like to thank Huawei Technologies for being the main sponsor for IFO 2022 by providing generous sponsorship that helped greatly in the making of this event possible. Finally, I would like to thank all student participants and team leaders from 75 participating nations without whom this event is simply not possible. Congratulations to all the medal and the honorable mention winners. I sincerely hope that you all, irrespective of the outcome in terms of the medals, have had a great learning experience by exposure to the challenging problems, which I'm sure will help you in your future that is coming next. I would like to invite all student participants, team leaders, observers, invigilators, committee members, including markers, and others who were associated with IFO 2022 in one or the other form to please register as IFU alumni at our official IFO website. I look forward to meeting you all, or many of you at least, hopefully physically at IFO 2023 in Tokyo, Japan next year. Until then, stay safe, healthy, and happy. With this, I declare I for 2022 close.